I recently made a video on soloing group chests and how you can use it to make a lot of money. And after I put that video out, I also realized it might be possible to solo mage raid, which is something I've always wanted to be able to do. And turns out I was right. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can mage raid as a solo player. Hey everyone, real quick before this video starts, I am giving out a bunch of free premium and skins courtesy of SBI, so if you want to win, they are hidden throughout this video. There will be codes hidden in this video like the one in the tree over here. All you have to do is enter it into your account page on the Albion Online website or in the login screen for mobile and you can get some free premium or skins depending on what that code is for. They are first time only, so be fast, and I know this isn't as helpful to mobile users, it's a little bit harder for you to find the codes, so I'm also giving away stuff on my Discord, which link you can find in the description, so make sure you enter those, and watch this video very quickly, and good luck on the giveaways. So real quickly, just a basic explanation of what mage raiding is for those of you that don't know. Territories out in the black zone spawn mages on them that protect the territory and provide the guild with some benefits. You can go into the territory and kill these mages and they give you points towards your guild's conqueror challenge as well as providing you with might and favor and they drop a lot of siphoned energy. So often you'll see guilds form groups to go out and mage raid so they can progress their guild's challenge and get higher season points as well as make some money and get some content. So for the build, it's slightly different than the one for soul and group chests as you're going to be using the great nature because you're going to need to kill groups of mobs. And along with that great nature, you want the specter hood or you can use assassin hood as well as a slightly cheaper option. They're both very good. Hellion jacket's going to be your chest piece. And then for your shoes, again, mercenary shoes are a cheap option or else tenacity shoes are a little bit better. For your cape, food and potions, you're going to go with the demon cape for extra damage, pork roasts for that lifesteal as it's really important, and lastly poison potions to help you kill the guards and the mages faster, although you can also take invisibility potions if you want to be a little bit more safe. For abilities on your weapon, I'll go over them during the clear as you switch them depending on what you're doing, and for the armor, it's just all of your special abilities with the balanced mind passive on everything. For your IP and how high tier gear you need to run to be able to do this, the clips that you're going to see me doing in this video, I was running out with a 1500 IP Great Nature and chest piece in the Hellion Jack, and then 1400 on the Shoes and Helmet, along with a 5.3 Demon Cape and 7.2 Roasts. With this setup, I could clear level 1 and level 2 Terries pretty comfortably, and I didn't find any level 3 territories, but it should be just barely possible with this sort of IP and setup to do level 3s as well. If you just want to do the level 1 tiers, you should be good with around 1 tier lower, around 100 IP lower on every item than I was going, so 1400 on the weapon and chest and 1300 on the helmet and shoes. You should be able to do level 1s no problem with that, and you could probably even get away with doing even another 100 IP lower than that. If you just only pull 2 guards at the same time and no more than that, you should be able to do it with even around 1300 IP on every piece. Okay, so looking at your place, uh, how you actually go and clear the mages, the first step to clearing the mages is simply to find the mages. So really, basically, if you open your map with M, there's a tab or an option at the top to see siphoning mages. It'll allow you to quickly see which territories currently have mages up and which ones don't. And then you can press on the map to see the level of the territory will be at the very top. Just a quick note along with this, when you're trying to find the best territories to do, the quality of the zone matters. It doesn't make the territory any stronger, but it does influence the rewards that you get. So you'll get like more siphoned energy from a higher quality zone than a lower quality zone. Once you've identified a territory that you want to go for, it will either be a farm territory or a resource territory as there are two types and they have different layouts. Now the easiest way for me to go over the clear is probably just to go over an example. So let's start with a farm territory, which is the quicker to do, but also more dangerous to do of the two. So in the farm territory, mages will spawn at the west and east corners, as well as two in the middle platform. The one that will spawn the first is always on the east corner, so that's the most likely one that will be up, so I would check there first. So to start off, you want to run up mounted and then go into this corner here. And then you can just go invisible with your shoes to drop all the mob aggro and sort of get set up without having to worry too much about killing all the guards when you come in. 
For your abilities, you want to put on, along with Thorns, Protection of Nature on your W and Calmness on your passive, and then you can go and pull these two crossbow guards and kill them. After those two are dead, the next thing you need to do is you only need to clear one more guard before killing the mage, which is a crossbow man that roams the northeast wall. Here I kill the other three with it, but that is unnecessary, it just sometimes makes it easier if it's roaming and it pulls them all. You can just kill them all at once, as sometimes it's easier if your IP is high enough to do the pull. Once those three guards are dead, all that's left is to go and kill the mage, but before you do this you want to switch your W from Protection of Nature to Revitalize and your passive from Calmness to Energetic, as those are really necessary for the mage fight. Now the mage fight itself should actually be a lot easier than the guard pulls, as long as you dodge the tornadoes and use your Revitalize in between its attacks, getting it off as much as possible, you should be able to sustain pretty well through the mage fight. It's just a long fight, it has a lot of HP, but you can sustain through all of it, so it's pretty easy overall. At around 40% HP, the mage will use an ice block and summon these three like blue mobs around it. These are really weak and simple to kill, they don't do that much damage and they die fairly quickly. It's honestly just a really nice time to be able to heal up again. You can use your Hellion Jack and hit it on all three mobs, which helps you heal up even more. And then once they're dead, they drop energy pools on the ground. If you do need energy, you can stand in them, and you should have some time to use your Revitalize as well, so you can just get reset back up to full HP and energy with this Ice Block mob phase. After the mobs are dead and the ice block is over, it's just back to the same thing that you were doing before, and it shouldn't be too long before the mage dies and drops some nice siphon energy for you, as well as giving you a nice little bit of might. For the mage on the west of these resource cherries, it will be the exact same, and then for the middle, again, it's very similar. I'm not going to show you the entire bowl here, just kill a couple guards around it first, and then kill the mage after, making sure it doesn't aggro any extra guards. For the resource terries, they're a lot safer as you don't have to go as deep inside of the territory, but you do have to kill more guards for each mage, so they do take a little bit longer. Similar to the farm territories though, you will have one mage on the east, one mage on the west, and then in this time there will be two on the north corner of the territory instead of in the middle. Again, I'm not going to show you a full clear for these as it's pretty basic. You can just pull one or two of the guards at a time around the mage, kill them, and then move on to the next group before finally moving on to the mage once there's no guards left around it. Now, a couple things to note that you need to know before we end this video. First, one thing that's really important is for both of the territories in the double mage spawns the north and the middle of the territories, if there is a double mage spawn up, as in they're both up and alive, don't even try to do these solo as you cannot really do a double mage pull as a solo. You have to pull them both at the same time and it's just too difficult as a solo player. You're not going to be able to kill them both even at a level 1 terry with super high tier gear. It's just too many attacks to deal with all at once. So if there's a double mage spawn, just ignore it and move to the other ones. Second, it's really important to know that enemies get notified when their guards and mages are under attack, so any guild members will see that in their chat as soon as you start killing the guards and the mages, and if they're online and they want to defend them, they can be geared up and ready to kill you very quickly. If you don't want to be disturbed and are looking just to do the mage raids and not have anyone come and fight you, it's usually best to go for ZVZ alliances, either on their main ZVD timers where you know most of them are going to be out doing ZVZ somewhere else, or if you look around their zones for the sort of lower level, lower value zones that they don't go to as often, usually there will be some terries there that are like super low level that they won't really care about and travel to to go and try to defend. On the other hand, if you go to like a Z to Z Alliance's main zone and try to kill those mages, you're probably going to get attacked by them. Or if you go to a small guild that only has one territory, for example, then you will also probably get attacked if you try to take those mages. Lastly, while this entire video was showing you how you can solo mage raid, I wouldn't really suggest it too much. You can do it if you enjoy it and you find it fun. It still is a decent activity, but it is a lot better in a two to three man group as you can just do it faster and safer and easier with lower tier gear for similar rewards. Just note, if you take more than three people, you'll start getting more than one ice block phase. So you usually want to limit it to two to three people. Okay, that's all you need to know to solo Mage Raid. I hope this video helps you and you enjoyed it. If you did, do all the things you do to videos, and I will see you in the next one.